Hello, today we're going to talk about traversing a two-dimensional array in Java. So we'll start by learning how we create a two-dimensional array, what a two-dimensional array is, and then how we can traverse it using either for loops or for each loops. Now a two-dimensional array, we would declare it like this, we'd say int, and we'd have two sets of square brackets to let the compiler know we want a two-dimensional array. Then we have the variable name, and then we can either hard code in the value of the array, or we can just say like new int and how many rows and how many columns we want. Now, it's important to understand that a two-dimensional array is really a one-dimensional array with other one-dimensional arrays inside it. So normally for tracing purposes, we draw it out like this, and we say we've got our rows and then our columns. However, truly what's going on is a little closer to this, where we've got our array, our outer array, and inside each of those indexes is another one-dimensional array. So it's one-dimensional arrays inside another one-dimensional array. But for the purposes of tracing, we prefer to use it like this. Okay, so um, what we're going to start by doing is checking what this is going to print off. Now, in Java, we say we treat arrays as row majors if they're two-dimensional arrays. So the first number is going to refer to the row. The second number is going to refer to the column. So we want to go to row 2, 0, 1, 2, and column 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is going to end up printing off the number 0, because that's what is in row 2, column 3. Remember, of course, arrays are 0 indexed. They always start off at 0. Okay, so let's look how we can go through and print off everything in the array. Now we need to have nested for loops because we need to go through every row and every column. So on the outside for loop is going to be for rows. The inside for loop is going to go through columns. So we start off as int row equals zero and we're going to continue as long as row is less than array dot length. Now we aren't specifying anything other than an array. So is it telling us the number of rows or is it telling us the number of columns? Since two-dimensional arrays in Java are considered row major, if we just say the name of the array dot length, it's going to tell us the number of rows. So this is actually going to be three for this array because there are one, two, three rows. Then at the end of the for loop, we just increment row by one. Now we've got a second for loop, and this says int call for column equals zero. Column is less than an array, and then we have the row here. Now the reason for this is we are pulling out the one-dimensional array inside this row and checking how many columns does it have. Now we need to do this because the number of rows and the number of columns can be different. So for example, we've got three rows and four columns. So what we're doing is the first time through, we're pulling out our first row, or if we're using our alternate visualization, pulling out this, and then we're taking the length of it. So this is going to be a size of 4 for every row. Now normally in AP Computer Science A, we are dealing with standard arrays that are rectangular in shape. However, it is possible to have what's called a jagged array, where different rows can have um, a different number of columns. So for example, first row could have 4 columns, second row could have 2 columns, third row could have 10 columns. So that's why we want to make sure we're checking the right row because as we pull them out, we want to be checking the length of that so we don't either go out of bounds or we don't miss an index. Okay, so once we are going through this inner loop, we're going to say system out print line, and we're going to print out an array, whatever the value of the row is, and then whatever the value of the column is. Now in this case, we're going to start off row 0, we're going to start off column 0. And then, so we're going to start off by printing out 5. Then we're going to increment column by 1. So we'll print off row 0, column 1. Then increment column by 1, row 0, column 2. Then increment column by 1, row 0, column 3. Increment column by 1. Column is no longer less than the size of the array. So we terminate out of this internal loop. We add 1 to row. So now row equals 1, and we start column at 0 again. So this internal loop goes row 1, column 0, and then row 1, column 1, and so on. 
until we get all the way through our array. Now you may notice I'm using the print instead of the print line. And that's because when it prints off, I want it to print these all in the same row. Print line would create a new row. Now, every time it finishes going through the internal loop, it makes a new line. And that way we make a new line at the end here. So our next one, we start off and go with those. So let's print that off to see how that works. Let's run it. And here we go. Every time we hit the end of a row, we make a new line and pick up there again. Okay, now let's look at the second way to traverse a two-dimensional array. And this is using a for each loop. Now, what we have to do is we can't traverse an entire two-dimensional array with one for each loop. So what we need to do is we need to start by breaking it down into one-dimensional arrays and then traverse the one-dimensional arrays. So what this does is this for each loop, it pulls out each one-dimensional array. So the first time through, it pulls out this one-dimensional array or this one in the alternate visualization. The second time through, it pulls this one out. And the third time through, it pulls this one out. As a for each loop, we don't need to worry about how many indexes there are. It takes care of that for us. It will only grow through the for each loop the right number of times to pull everything out. So we pull out, let's look at our first time through. We pull out this first array, 5, 3, 6, 7. And we put that in a one dimensional array called temp array. Then we have an internal for each loop that pulls out the individual int values. And this will go through four times because there's four individual int values. And then we print off temp value. And once we go through all four of these um, indexes in our first one-dimensional array, we'll terminate the internal for each loop, make a new line, go back up to the top, and then pull out the next row. And then on the next row, we'll go through and pull out each of the individual int values. So it's a little easier way to write it. Now again, like with a one-dimensional array, uh, depending on the data type, changing temp array or temp value may not change the data inside the actual array. Whereas if we want to change the data inside the actual array in standard for loops, it's real easy. We just say an array equals, or an array row column equals, you know, whatever we want it to equal, and then it'll change the actual data in the array. So, we've learned about what two-dimensional arrays are, how to traverse them using either a for loop and an internal for loop, or a for each loop and then another for each loop.